Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm always anticipating the start of my new planners. This year is looking very different than 2022 for me. I discovered fountain pens this year, probably in late September. It sounds so corny, but I feel like it has just changed the game for me when it comes to writing and in a small way has changed my life a little bit. What I discovered through using fountain pens is that I think I'm more of a journaler slash writer than I am planner because what I noticed is soon as I started using fountain pens was I just wanted to write. I wanted to use these beautiful pens and I didn't care what or where I was writing. I just wanted to write. It totally changed the experience for me. For years, I was trying to use brush pens. I invested hundreds of dollars in Tombow brush pens, which I actually do love very much. I bought the entire collection of the Faber-Castells, uh, which I didn't use quite as much, but these are just the colors that I thought I would use the most, but really I use my Tombows much more. But I've always considered myself to have decent handwriting. So when I started using fountain pens, I was like, well, this is what I'm trying to get the brush pens to do. You know, if I was using a broader nib, Anyway, fast forward to today. I have a crazy amount of books that I've been writing in. For my planner lineup, I'm going to start with the most practical, functional books, and then I'm going to go down to the books and journals that are just really just books that feed my soul. They are little projects that I have, areas that I wanna practice in. For people who are looking for practical use planners, that's going to be probably the first half of the video. All of the extras I'm going to put at the end. I honestly didn't even count how many books. I mean, I stacked them on one another. I also wanna talk a lot about how things have changed this year. So if you watched my planner video last year, I would say that it was 90% about fashion and 10% about function. I was obsessed with acquiring all of the Louis Vuitton agendas. This was really the one that I wanted the most and I wanted it in this pattern. At the time I wanted to purchase this, was, which was last like, I don't know, October, November. These were all sold out online everywhere in this pattern. And I happened to go into a store and they had this book. So I bought the agenda and the GM and the monogram. And in the meantime, bought the Damir Abin pattern on Poshmark. And then on Mercari, I purchased the personal size planner for a really good deal. But I very rarely touch these planners. So let's just start with the practical use planners and then we'll go through to what I've been working on recently. So this is kind of my workhorse. This has become more of a reference book. This mainly stays on my desk. It doesn't really leave my house and I put all of my work related tasks and information in here. So I keep my passwords in this book. Any of the brands that I'm working with, I have a section called projects and I will write down who my contact person is for the brand for people who may be sponsoring me on my other channel. I, I don't think I've done any sponsored content on this channel, but I will write down who my contact person is, what my deliverables are, you know, the rate that I'm working for, when things need to be due. I also use the daily section of this book if I'm really needing to focus because I toggle between this and my Hobonichi cousin. Those are my two main functional books. So I did decorate it a little bit for the new year. Forgive the glare. I have my little mantra here, keep going and keep growing. That was kind of, as far as things went for me for my new year's resolution, just trying to keep moving forward, keep growing. The one thing that I did change out of my Hobonichi book and into this book was my YouTube growth page. This was something that I tracked pretty regularly in my Hobonichi cousin at the beginning of the book. I just decided that I wanted my Hobonichi to be a little bit more creative. I am also doing a gratitude journal in the Hobonichi weeks, which I'll share with you. I liked the layout of the chart in the weeks, but I didn't want to track my YouTube growth in my gratitude journal even though I'm very grateful for any growth that I have on YouTube. If I was gonna chart anything, um, I'm making this more of like a health and wellness book. So I plan to track either steps or water that I'm drinking or walks with Lulu, things like that. So I decided to move my growth tracker for YouTube into this book and I decorated it a little bit. So I just photocopied the chart from the beginning of the weeks and put it in here. I have some beautiful stickers from Sterling Inc and I just used a white gel pen to decorate and stuck it right on. So then I have the first half of the year on the front page, second half of the year on the back page. By having my YouTube tracker in here, 
I am in this book every day. It kind of forces me to check in. I check in in the morning and just write the number. It's just kind of more ritual. I also will do undated weekly pages in here, but I'm much more faithful to my weekly pages in my Hobonichi, which is why I decided to keep these undated. Some weeks I'm more in a work zone and I'll track more things in here, but every single week I track in my Hobonichi. Where I really dig into this is on my daily pages. My daily pages and my Hobonichi cousin are more decorative. They're more reflective of the day, more like diary style. But my dailies, the way that I use them in my GM, in my agenda, my Louis Vuitton agenda, is I do more of like task lists and things that need to get done. I hope that makes sense. The Hobonichi is more reflective. The Louis Vuitton planner is more like what, what I need to do. Sorry, Lulu's scratching. These happen to be cloth and paper inserts. Um, I actually prefer the daily inserts from Infinite Lotus. They just have a little bit of a lighter line and the lighter, the more faint the line, the better, but I love the layout of the cloth and paper. So I use them both. Another very important section to my Louis Vuitton planner is my passwords. And I actually type those out. They change sometimes, but I have um, bank information and you know a lot of private stuff that I need to get my hands on passwords for the various platforms that I sell on I am a reseller so I'm on Poshmark I'm on e eBay on Depop I use a cross-listing service and I need passwords for all of those so those are all recorded in this book like I said more of a reference book so this is kind of like I would be lost without this but I don't necessarily use it as often as I use my Hobonichi I have a note section a brand section, like I mentioned. Um, I picked these up at the Goodwill, and these are just envelopes with the months on them. My husband is my accountant, he's my bookkeeper. <laughs> so at the end of the month, I, I thrift for a living and then resell the clothing items, so I will keep a lot of my receipts right in here. And then um, I keep them in like a Ziploc bag, at the end of the month and I give them to my husband. He calls me a shoebox client because I kind of just hand him everything and he's the best and figures it all out for me. So that is my Louis Vuitton GM. I love the versatility of the rings in here and I had never been in rings prior to last year. Um, I used the Mom Agenda for years. I used Erin Condren's planner back in the day. More recently, I was in the Passion Planner for like three, maybe four years. I was an ambassador for them. And then then I discovered rings and then I went down this Louis Vuitton rabbit hole. I also bought the notebook cover for Louis Vuitton um, and then I ended up returning it. So I do love these. I would love to think of something more functional for these books. Sometimes I just keep this one in my purse just for note keeping. But even that, I'm more apt to grab my Hobonichi Weeks um, and throw it in. The biggest shift between 2022 and 2023 was basically adopting my Hobonichi cousin back in 2022. And I feel like I took most of last year to get to know the book. And I had a lot of sloppy pages and I was really just trying to find my rhythm in that book. And I think I did by the end of the year. It really correlated with when I started using fountain pens, when I started to journal every single day in my Hobonichi, especially in my dailies. I would say at the beginning of the year, I was much more into my weeks in the Hobonichi Cousin, that section. And then by the end of the year, I was wholeheartedly uh, really on board with the daily pages. So why don't we transition and talk about the Hobonichi Cousin, the book that I would say that I'm in the most. I have it in a Moterm case. This is the pebbled leather and I think it is the taupe. I love the Moterm line. You're gonna see three of their items in this lineup. I also have a Moterm cover for my Hobonichi Weeks and the pebbled leather as well. I know they have the veggie tanned leather. It's higher end, but to be quite honest, after spending over $1,000 last year on multiple books for Louis Vuitton. I just didn't want to spend any more money on the outside of my books. I wanted to invest on what was inside. The Motor and Pebbled Leather, I really enjoy. I love this color. I'm sorry, I'm like getting a little cold here, feeling a little congested. So this is inside, here is the Hobonichi Weeks. I also have the little plastic Motor cover on my Hobonichi Cousin, um, which I just recycled last year's. I just cleaned it off. Something that I added this year that I did not do last year was I added tabs on the side. I first watched Helen, who runs the Coffee Monsters 
Inc. Coffee Monsters Co channel and I love her so much. I have a lot of her stickers um, in last year. This year I'm going a little bit more in the, the floral kind of calming designs by Sterling Inc. Catherine at Sterling Inc. I did a big order for her from her and I'm using a lot of those. But these little tabs that I'm using here, these are just from um, Amazon and they came in a package with several different colors. I use this like smoky blue in this book. I really like the divider, so I put those in ahead of time. There's also a section for weekly, and then I put my monthlies in. But my spreads are pretty simple. Um, this is what my current spread looks like. One of the functions that I really love about the Hobonichi Cousin is I use this side panel to kind of do a major checklist for the week, things that need to get done by the end of the week. And at the bottom part of this page, I put orders in. <laughs> because I seem to be ordering fountain pens, somehow they just miraculously appear on my doorstep every couple of weeks. I'm trying to keep track of my orders. So I will write them on the side and when I start to see a lot of things adding up, I ordered a new pouch from the Superior Labor and I've been keeping track of all of those. But I love Sterling Inks. Um, stickers they're so pretty i also have been using these clear dots when i upload a video to either one of my channels this is time with tata and my name is Lori. by the way i don't always introduce myself as Lori. my other channel is called Lori's boston found my last name is tata like tata t-a-t-a -T -A. it's italian but we pronounce it tata but the real italian pronunciation is tata it's been americanized through the years if you're new here hi i know my title is confusing i have good friends who just call me by my last name tata and so when i was coming up for the channel name here i wasn't really sure what direction this channel was going to go in i started it out more as a lifestyle channel and now i've just been quickly really digging into the planning and fountain pen eventually i'll share some other content over here but that's my dog's going to get out of the house. But that's kind of where I've been living these days. I really love my Hobonichi Cousin. Um, I'll show you a couple samples of my dailies. The dailies are where I really get to dig in with my fountain pens. Towards the end of the year in my Hobonichi Cousin, I was using different colors every day. Let me get that book. This is last year's Hobonichi Cousin. And uh, one of the things that I was doing is at the start of every month, I was doing a currently inked page for all of my fountain pens. Then I would just go into different colored pages and every day I was trying new inks and I liked it. I did this little insert at one point because I was adding new, new pens to my collection and I enjoyed it, but at the same time, I wanted something a little bit more streamlined for my Hobonichi cousin. I do keep loosely what I'm doing today in this column. Some days are busier than others. Sometimes I don't fill this in until the end of the day, so it's more reflective and I kind of back plan at the end of the day. I'm really focused on making it just look pretty where my Louis Vuitton Ton is much more practical. I'm a little bit more decorative in here, but I'm trying to be decorative, but also a bit minimalist in this book because I feel like I have some other books that I have where I can be a little bit more artsy. I hope this is all making sense. I know there are a lot of different styles for these videos and I I'm hope I'm, I'm doing this justice. All right, a new addition this year is the Hobonichi Weeks and people rave about this planner and I just had to think of a purpose for this book. So this has become my gratitude slash wellness planner. Very simply put, I just write what I'm grateful for every day. I've missed a couple days and I decided that on the days that I missed writing things in here, I would just go back and maybe doodle or just put something like grateful for Lulu Marie, my dog, because I could write that every day. And this was another one where I kind of started by using the same or similar ink over here, writing things that I'm grateful for. And over here, I was just messing around with um, different things that I wanted to do as far as wellness goes. I have not settled in over here and I'm okay with that. As much as I want this to be a beautiful planner to look at, 
I'm just taking my time because this is a new planner for me until I find what really works. So I was recording my sleep. I have a Fitbit and it gives me like a sleep score every day, but I have those stats right on my phone and right on my wrist if I want them. I thought what might be nicer to track for me is movement because that's an area I struggle in and I've been walking my dog every day and you know, I'm trying to get to my 10,000 steps. So I was thinking that in this little square over here, instead of tracking my sleep, I would track my movement. Another thing that I'm looking to track over here is water intake. I've also been toying around with whether or not I just want to do a food journal in here. Every week I've done a little bit of different things. The only thing that has been consistent is the gratitude portion. But this, I got this in, this is like a little champagne color. Again, sorry for the glare. Uh, this was a little New York sticker that I got when I recently traveled to Yoseka Stationery. Um, so I don't really have much as far as decorative things in here yet. But that's it, and I really don't have a plan for the back yet. On December 9th, apparently, I wrote down all of my pens. <laughs> uh, that's kind of random. As I think of little trackers, like one of the things that I enjoy tracking are um, shows that I'm binge watching. We watched White Lotus. What was the other show that we watched recently? Knives Out. My girlfriends and I are going to start a little book club, which I haven't been a part of a book club in so long. So I think those are all the things that I will track in my weeks and I'm excited and this is just such a cute little book and it's just so easy to carry around it's lightweight I really like it my Louis Vuitton planner this sucker is heavy and I love it but it's a lot to carry all right I have something that's very very new to me and by new I mean I've been in this for three days but it has been so exciting and this is where I'm getting to use my fountain plant pens in a really major way. I watch a lot of videos now on journaling, the benefits of journaling, and I, through the years, have heard a lot of people talk about morning pages, but really didn't know that it was like an actual strategy or technique until I watched a video recently. This gentleman, I wish I knew his name, I'll find his video and put it up here on the screen. He was saying how he journaled for 90 days and how it changed his life. So I clicked on it and he talked about morning pages. And I'm like, I know I've seen videos about morning pages, but the gist of it is that you write every morning as early as you can, as soon as you wake up um, and you write three pages, stream of consciousness, no rules, just writing. I view it as like getting the cobwebs out. Whenever I sit down to write, and again, I've only done this for three days, so I promise I will check back with you, but I love it. So I, I feel like this is going to be something that is going to stick. Literally, I just sit down, I pick a fountain pen, which is really enjoyable for me. And the first day, I think I used my Pilot Vanishing Point, and I just write for three pages. <laughs> and then the next day I chose a different color and I will write which pen I used. So the second day I used my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Winter Rain and I think that the ink was called Hara Hara and I wrote for three pages. This morning I used my new um, Custom Pilot 823 and the color that was in here is the Robert Oster Cafe Crema and three pages of that. So I will write down the date when I started writing, so this morning, I started writing at 7.51 a.m. And you don't think that you can think of what to write for three pages, but I find it flies by for me. And I was done writing at 8.15. This morning took a little bit extra time because I had to stop in the middle of my writing to say goodbye to my husband or something like that. The first two days took between like 14 and 16 minutes to do three pages, so roughly five minutes per page. It gives me my fountain pen fix, which I really enjoy, because I can use a different color every day and then keep my Hobonichi daily pages streamlined and more minimalist. It's just such a great way to get my thoughts out, and the theory behind it is that once you kind of get those thoughts out on paper, kind of gives your mind some clarity. You might work through some things you might be worried about or thinking about, get them out on paper, and then you're able to go on with your day and kind of lead a more productive day. I've really loved this. I'm using a Loistrom notebook. I have been a fan of these notebooks for a long time, the 1917. I just broke into this one. Whenever I'm out and I see one of these notebooks that I love, a color that I like, I will grab it because I know eventually I will use it. I watched a video uh, for Loistrom. Their message I absolutely loved. It was basically, 
get rid of all the rules and just write. Rip the pages out if you don't like what it is, scribble on the pages, get your thoughts out. And they had this great marketing and I just really connected with their marketing. And I thought, you know, sometimes I look at my notebooks and I'm like, oh, they're so pretty. I don't want to touch them. I don't want to be messy in them. And then it is paralyzing and I don't touch it. I gave myself permission to be messy in this particular book and it is a mess. This basically, if, if I want to write things down, instead of using a post-it note, I will use this notebook. And then that way I can always refer back. I have some pages that are very neat. Um, I used to use this book for um, generating ideas for YouTube, but then one of my dear friends gave me this bit book, which she had personalized with my YouTube channel, Lori's Boston Found, with the little YouTube sticker, and my little tagline is, where thrifted is the new black. I stared at this book for probably seven months. I thought it was so pretty. My good friend gave it to me. I wanted to think of a good use for it. I didn't want to waste it. I didn't want to make it messy. So I dug into this one and then finally, just one day I ripped off the Band-Aid and this has now become my brainstorming notebook for YouTube. Right now on my other channel, I'm doing um, top five things my top five sales of 2022, top five brands that I'm looking for this year. I have a whole list. So every time I think of a new top five video, I write it in here. And actually I have time with Tata planner lineup. And these are the notes for today's video, which I haven't even looked at once. But when I was starting to plan for this video on December 16th, I started to write down all of my notebooks and planners and what I was using them for. So these notebooks, I absolutely love. They all serve different purposes in my life. YouTube planning, this is just my kind of junk notebook that I keep. I actually ripped the side of it the other day, doesn't matter. This is just like my, it's okay, you could write anything down in this and it doesn't matter. My YouTube idea and then the new edition, my morning pages. And this is the one that I'm really having a good time with. And all of these books come with a little, little sticker sheet so you can write on the spine. And I just wrote um, Morning Pages Volume 1 because I anticipate I'm going to go through the books quite quickly because I'm writing three pages a day. And these are just the little sheets that they give you. And you can also do this as like a book plate in the front. I just cut a little section out of this. And I also did it for YouTube content ideas. And this one I didn't mark because I don't know that I'll be saving that. So I just wanna say, if you're partway through this video and you're thinking, girl, I'm already overwhelmed with the amount of books you have. I get it. I do this because it feeds my soul. The first two books that you saw, those are my practical calendars, work, get your work done, put your appointments in there, check off your to-do list, don't forget your dentist appointment. That's what those books are for. Obviously my Hobonichi cousin, I can get a little bit more creative with, um, but now I'm getting more into the, you know, the gratitude journal, wellness journal with my Hobonichi weeks. These are all more notebooks, my morning pages I'm really excited about. I say that this is kind of like my free therapy, writing things out in the morning, giving myself some clarity, and I enjoy it. Like I enjoy the whole process of using my pens. It just kind of brings me joy. This book, I didn't have in my initial pile here, but this is an Archer and Olive notebook, and I obsessed over this um, this dot grid notebook. I had a very small journey with bullet journaling. I was obsessed with bullet journaling. I bought all the stuff for bullet journaling, but at the end of the day, I was just not a good bullet journaler because I wasn't consistent and I wasn't good at like creating my own pages. Catherine De Silva is somebody who I absolutely love and respect. She is a creator out of Canada and she had this book and she used to name all of her journals and of course she named this Joe. And when I went to Archer and Olive to buy it, they were sold out. They reintroduced this and I bought two of them because I love it. And I bought this when I bought my Banu fountain pen, which is a Goulet Pens exclusive because it paired so beautifully with this book. I was trying to think of a purpose for this book. This has become kind of like journal when I want, sketch when I want, and maybe throw some goals in here. This book has no rules except for to be pretty and creative. Even when I started it, I thought it was gonna be better about my structure. I follow Shada Campbell. She has these great tutorials for bullet journaling and she's just an unbelievable artist. And so I was following some of her monthly pages. So I drew this and I made it like a little pocket and put some of my goals for the month in here. I kind of journaled throughout the month. But what this 
also turned into was uh, a drawing thing because I would look forward to Shada's monthly plan with me's and I would just kind of copy the first picture and do my own version. This was October. This is one of my very favorite drawings that I've done. And again, it's 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 not an original one because I copied it from Shada. She also does these, um, these little cutouts and I would put my goals in back and then not achieve them, but I had good intentions. I was really into watching The Handmaid's Tale and I was binge watching it this season. One day I was sketching and I drew a Handmaid's Tale, a handmaid. Yeah, so this is just kind of like a diary, I guess, for lack of a better word. And I just hang out, I do some doodle drawing in this. The paper is just so gorgeous. Um, I'm not bullet journaling, so I decided I would make this a little bit of an artist notebook. One day my daughter wanted to paint, and this is my partridge in a pine tree. <laughs> this is what I like to call this. And I really like how it came out. Again, a lot of these are more creative. This I'm super inconsistent with, and I've just learned to be okay with that. Next up is a journal I just started before I pressed record on uh, today's video. This is a Claire Fontaine notebook. I've been wanting to start an ink journal for a while, and much like I hesitated with my YouTube notebook, I've been hesitating on my ink journal because I wanted it to look very pretty, very aesthetic. Days, weeks, months have gone by and I haven't started my ink journal because I haven't had like the perfect plan for it. And then I ordered all the Diamine inks in the ink vent calendar for 2022. I'm not crazy about all of the colors in there, but I thought that that would be a good place to start. One of the things that I wanted to do with my ink journal is to leave enough space underneath my ink sample so that every time I ink up a pen with that particular ink, I can do a writing sample on that page. And then I just decided that some of these colors in the ink vent calendar, I would likely never put in a pen for everyday use. So I quickly decided that for today, for the sake of today's video and just ripping the bandaid off and starting my ink journal, I was just going to do a few per page and just write the name of the ink. I would say that of the 25 colors in the ink vent calendar, there are probably seven, maybe eight that I would use on any regular basis. Right now, this color Three Kings, I have that in my um, Pilot Metropolitan. It looks really nice in my Pilot Metropolitan pen. There are certain colors I will probably never use. Yule Log is one of my favorites. It has some great shimmer. I have this in my Bennu pen. I have a lot of brownish pens that this looks great with. It really has a ton of shimmer in it, so I like to use it like on a medium or a broad dim. I have used Best Wishes. This has some great shimmer, but I think I had this in my Pilot Metropolitan, uh, my Pilot Vanishing Point, and it just looked kind of dark. But anyway, so today I started my ink journal. I'm very excited I did. It does not look nearly as pretty and aesthetic as I wanted it to look, but I did 25 inks and I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would because I didn't love all of the inks in the Diamine Ink Vent calendar as much fun as that was. That was like such a great introduction to inks for me because I was just getting into inks at the time. I have a whole separate box with inks that I've bought full bottles of that I'm very passionate about that I use all the time and I think that those I will spend more time. When I first got the idea for an ink journal, I grabbed this Stalogy notebook, and this is a smaller size, and I had just thought I would put one color per page with a little sample and then leave the lines to be able to do my fountain pen sample. So I might do this separately still, but I do really enjoy the concept of an ink journal and it is actually very practical when I'm thinking about inking up a new pen. It's nice to see what it looks like as a paint swatch and then what it looks like in a pen. This book. This is a traveler's notebook that I got from Moterm. I've talked about this before. This is a fantastic book. Um, I haven't really gotten too far down the rabbit hole with traveler's company notebooks. I have a ton of their stuff, but I haven't really dug in and gone the super creative route yet. I have a similar book to this, another black one from the traveler's company that my husband bought for me in Japan that I plan on taking to Barcelona when we go visit my daughter in the winter, late winter, early spring. I mentioned recently on my other channel that my dad is really sick. Tomorrow's a big appointment for him. We're going to get some results back on, uh, 
MRIs and PET scans and biopsies and things like that. A way that I feel like I can help my family is I've been keeping track of all of the doctors, the nurse practitioners, the appointments, of the locations of the different tests. And while I'm waiting in places, I started sketching while I'm in waiting rooms chairs because that's like really the only thing that I see in the waiting room. So this is just three chairs in this little statue. I didn't finish that. <laughs> By the time I was done, my dad got out of his appointment. And then the other day I was there with my mom. This picture is really messy, but it was like an image of like bamboo in the background and then chairs. And I'm like, I guess I'm drawing chairs while I'm in the waiting rooms here. And then I'm kind of journaling the days of the appointments, like what time we're getting there, if there's any medicine information. And it's actually been really calming and it gives me some peace with everything that's going on. And when Jay came back from Japan, he had bought me the calendar inserts, the dated calendar inserts, which I just don't need them. I'm not using them in any other way with my other books. So I was like, these are gonna go to waste. And this is just January to June. And then they divide it June to December. This was perfect because I can keep track of all my dad's appointments and just feel like I'm helping in some way. I've really loved it. It's been, it's been really good. Last but not least, I don't think, is a five-year journal. People talk about these all the time. I, I think it's so cool, but then I feel like, oh God, that is just such a commitment. Well, because I thrift for a living, I came across this book over a year ago, and it's by, what is this? It says Unplanned, is that what it says? Oh, Unbound, Unbound, can you see that? It's this gorgeous linen book, and it just says five years on the cover. It's not any special paper. It just says 20 and you insert the date. Like I know with the Hobonichi five year planner, it actually gives you 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Like, and you know the years you're gonna be in here. This one, I've had it for over a year and it's been sitting on my shelf. And I'm like, oh, I'll sell that. And I'm like, why am I gonna sell it? I am a planner, like that would kind of be a cool thing. Then I was gonna make this my gratitude journal, but then I started it in the other book. So now, it's just kind of like a little daily highlight. If I could say the most important thing that happened that day or the most memorable thing that happened, that's what I'm gonna record in here. I used that beautiful sterling ink. These were from her December release and oh my gosh, I've never ordered from her before, but I feel like I could fill all of my planners with just her December uh, release and they were beautiful. So again, I've only done day one, day two, day three, and tonight, this book lives upstairs next to my bed because this is something I do at the end of the evening. Just a little reflection, two lines, done. So some of these things will have to see where they lead me to. For example, my morning pages, very new practice for me. My gratitude journal um, has been very easy for me. I, I've been feeling grateful for a lot of things lately and it's, it's only a few lines. I think the, the right side of those pages will evolve because the, the gratitude part is simple for me. The tracking and stuff like that. I feel like my weeks planner, my Hobonichi weeks is gonna be one of those books that I probably won't find my rhythm for a few months. And then by the end of this year, I'll have a really great way of knowing how that works for me. That is my lineup. To recap, we will go through my workhorse rings. This is the uh, Louis Vuitton GM Agenda, which is the largest of the three. This is my work planner, my Hobonichi cousin with the Moterm taupe pebbled leather cover. This is what I would consider my everyday book. Really enjoy the layout of the vertical weeks. I love my daily section in here. I didn't really talk much about my monthlies. I'm not a big monthly planner girl. I will put like major things in there, but I'm, I'm just, I, they don't do it for me. I'm not a big monthly girl in any of my planners. They just kind of exist. I'll put family trips, like if we're gonna be gone for a week, if my husband's traveling for a week and I need to see the whole month, that's when I'll use those. My gratitude journal in my Hobonichi weeks. This is my traveler's notebook, uh, which I'm using to document my dad's journey and help keep track of his appointments. I have my ink journal, Claire Fontaine and Stalogy, my Archer and Olive diary slash art journal, and my five-year notebook. That is my lineup. Like I said, I'm not using my personal agenda or this little baby agenda for Louis Vuitton. 
I'm a big collector of Louis Vuitton pieces, so I might hold on to these and try to think of something more functional because I don't want to let go of them right now, but eventually I may let go of them. And also, of course, my uh, notebooks for content planning, for morning pages, and for scribbles. I think everybody needs a scribble notebook. That is my lineup for 2023, as obnoxious and over the top as it may seem. Each one of them brings me joy for different reasons. They all serve a different purpose. I don't have planner guilt. I let that go a long time ago. I do have certain books like my Hobonichis that I wanna keep a certain way, but in general, I'm pretty free flowing and I'm really just enjoying the journey. And I love how all of these work with my fountain pens, which is really what has been tugging at my heartstrings and helping my creativity over the past few months. Well, that's it. Let me know what your lineup entails. What are you excited about planning for this year? What is your number one? If you could only pick one planner, what would it be? I think for me, I'd have to go with my Hobonichi cousin because this is just such a workhorse and I feel like I can be creative in it, but it's also functional and I love the paper and all that stuff. It's fountain pen friendly. If I had to pick just one, I think I would pick that, but this girl is not picking just one planner. Not now, not ever. <laughs> this is probably the most I've ever had going on at once, but it's also a season of my life. I'm an empty nester this year and I kind of have extra time. I could have never juggled all these planners with a house full of kids, no way. But now I have a little bit more time on my hands and um, this is how I'm choosing to spend my time. So thank you for spending your time with me watching my planner lineup. I feel like I'm a little late to the party. I just did not have my act together until today. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join my community. I do share a lot of the things I'm passionate about over here. If you enjoyed this video, please Please give it a thumbs up and I would love if you subscribe to my channel and be part of my com community over here at Time with Tata. If you want to check out Lori's Boston Found, if you're interested in thrifting or reselling, um, I've been over there for four years and I love both my channels. Thank you guys so much for being here. Make it a great day and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye.